In this video, we're going to do the prep work on a physical server in preparation for installing ESXi. And here is the actual physical server itself. It is a Dell R630. And I bought this on eBay just a few weeks ago. And it was, I think, around $300. And it includes 256 gigabytes of RAM. Amazing. Now, one of the reasons it's a little less pricey than a newer piece of hardware is because it is older and the CPUs in it are not officially supported by VMware with vSphere 8. However, they do run vSphere 8. So in a lab environment, we're just going to ignore the warning about the older CPU and move forward. It would also serve us to have a game plan in place. So this will represent the Dell R630 rack server. And as I mentioned, it's got 256 gigabytes of RAM and it has some network ports that we can use for network connectivity. And it also has USB ports and also a VGA port, which is one of the original video standards a long time ago before HDMI and display ports came out. And it's also got some USB ports that are built in. And I would strongly encourage you when you have a new Dell rack server like this to go ahead and get a monitor and plug that into the VGA port. And I'm also gonna plug in a keyboard and I'm also gonna plug in a mouse. So on this Dell R630, there are ports on the front and the back for VGA and USB. And on the back side, besides the network interface cards, there's also a little RJ45 connector over here. And that's the name of the jack type that's used for Ethernet networking. And we're going to use that for the management and working with this server. So what we'll do is we'll plug that into our network. So this little line here represents our network. Now in my home office, I'm using the network space of 192.168.1.0 with a 24-bit mask. Think of that like a street name. So that street 192.168.1. And then all the devices on that street have unique IP addresses. And one way of getting an IP address is DHCP, which is the dynamic host configuration protocol, which is used a lot for client computers to get an IP address. However, what we're gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and we are gonna have our management station right here. Let's say this is our computer, it could be Linux or Windows. I'll go ahead and label this as management PC. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect to and interact with this server over the network. Now, the trick is we need to make sure we can assign an IP address for management of the server. And so in the world of Dell, they have a service called iDRAC, which is the integrated Dell remote access controller. And think of the iDRAC as like a little teeny PC right here that we can connect to that gives us the ability to manage the overall server. So in getting this all set up initially, there's a little LED on the front side of the rack server. And what we could do is we could reset the iDRAC from there, specify the IP address we wanna use, and then connect to it. However, what I discovered is that because a lot of times we're getting used gear and there may be various situations happening, it's often super helpful to have a monitor connected directly to the VGA port and a keyboard and mouse right there as well. And that way for the initial configuration, including the initial configuration for iDRAC and the IP address we wanna use to manage the server, we can see exactly what's happening. So here are the major tasks that we're going to go ahead and accomplish right now on this Dell R630 server. We're gonna put connections in place. We'll have a connection here on this RJ45 port to our network. We'll connect a monitor to the VGA port and a keyboard and mouse to the USB ports. And then last but not least, we'll also make sure we connect it to power. So there's two power supplies in this Dell R630. I'm gonna just be using one of those. And so what we'll do is we'll power it on. And then as it powers up here, at the monitor and keyboard, we'll hit F2. And if you wanna spam that, that's okay, meaning you press that multiple times, and that will allow you to go into the initial setup for the Dell server. And then from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna reset the BIOS to its factory defaults, and that way anything that was set previously is all set to its defaults. And then secondly, we're gonna go ahead and reset the iDRAC. And that way any settings and or passwords and so forth associated with accessing the server via iDRAC will all be reset. And then furthermore, once we've done the reset of the BIOS and the reset of the iDRAC and we've rebooted the server, we're gonna do F2 again and go back into iDRAC and we'll set up the IP address that we wanna use and also the password we wanna to use to log on to iDRAC on this rack server. So in my lab environment, here's what I wanna do. I wanna use the address of 192.168.1.241. That IP address is currently not in use by anything else on my network, and I wanna assign that IP address to iDRAC services here on the Dell R630 server. And then when we log into iDRAC, it's gonna ask us to log in as a user. We'll use the default username of root. And as part of the setup for iDRAC, we can either change the password for root or we can use the default, which is C-A-L-V-I-N for the password. So that's the default username and password that we can use to log in. 
once we've reset IDRAC and we've set up the IP address that we want to use. Now, another option is we could just say, hey, go ahead and use DHCP services and then identify from the screen what the IP address it's using that it got from DHCP. But if you know what IP address you want to use, it's better to hard code it. And that way you know exactly where to go to manage the server. All right, so now that we've said that, let me walk you through an example of doing exactly that. Now for convenience in recording this, because it's easier to show this here than on a separate monitor, I'm just mirroring what is on the monitor that's connected to that rack server. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna press F2 right there. And that brings us here to system setup into the background. Uh, I've got some noise from the server because it's sitting right next to me and that's the fans keeping it cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click here on system BIOS. And then there's an option right here called default. And that will give us the option of resetting the BIOS settings to the factory default. So go ahead and do that. And then once you've done that, I'd also like you to go back in to boot settings and then change this from BIOS to UEFI. That's the one change we're gonna make here. And then click on back and then we'll click on finish. And if there's any changes, it'll ask you if you wanna save them, I'll say yes. Then there's a confirmation message, fantastic. We'll click on okay. And then we're back here to the system setup with these three main options. The second thing we'd wanna do is go in here to IDRAC settings. And here in IDRAC settings, if we scroll down on the right hand side, there's an option right here to reset IDRAC configuration to its defaults. I would suggest you do that to wipe everything regarding IDRAC back to the defaults and then click on finish and exit. It'll confirm, it'll reboot. And then once it reboots, I'd like you to go back in here to the system setup and then back to the IDRAC settings. And then under IDRAC settings, we're gonna go to the network settings here. So we'll click on network and then you can specify the IP address that you wanna use. So I've already got the IP address specified as 192.168.1.241, but whatever IP address you wanna use is great. In addition, we'd wanna specify the default gateway as well as the DNS server that this IDRAC can use. So once you modify this, you click on back and finish and finish and confirm, it'll do a reboot. And then once it reboots, you can now connect with a browser to the management IP address you specified for IDRAC. So I'll click on finish and finish. And the fans are spinning up and saying, are you sure you want to exit and reboot? And I'm gonna say yes. So now that the server has rebooted, we're gonna connect to it to the IP address we specified for IDRAC. And in the background, that server is making quite a bit of noise. I'll also walk you through how to quiet those fans down. But for now, let's go ahead and log in as root. And the password we're gonna use is the default password of C-A-L-V-I-N. And we'll click on submit. So this current flavor of IDRAC is IDRAC version eight. And on newer systems, I believe there's IDRAC nine and beyond. All right, so here's the graphical user interface courtesy of IDRAC. So here in the interface, in the virtual console preview, that's showing us the screen. So if you go to settings right here, one thing I would have you change in the event you ever wanna do a remote console is change the plugin type instead of the default, which is native, change it to HTML5. And that way, if it's set to HTML5 and you go back up to the server section on the left up here, and you wanna open up a remote console, you can just click launch right from here and it'll open up a console just as if you're sitting at the monitor connected to that server. Also at this point, once you've got iDRAC configured and you can remotely connect to it, you really don't need the monitor and keyboard and mouse anymore directly physically connected to the server. So you can remove those if you want. Cause this looks and feels like you're just sitting right at the server. So let me go ahead and let me disconnect the viewer. And this brings us back to the nice graphical user interface for iDRAC.